So it is now the 10th of September and I was last here four weeks ago when I uh, did my video report on fasting for 28 days, four weeks. So now this is the end of eight weeks. And you remember I told you last time, but I hadn't been hungry at all. And uh, I still haven't been hungry at all. Now I had three meals in those first four weeks, you know, events I had to go to. And I've had three meals in the next four weeks, events I had to go to. But I wasn't hungry. Now, you know why that was so. But I'll just do a quick recap. In the, tw the videos are called Cure All Fast. 28 days, 35 days a week later, 40 days just to prove Jesus could have done it too, 50 days, and this is going to be 56. Now, in the first one, I pointed out the guy who had reversed his diabetes in 11 days. All right, Richard Doughty. By going, he called it a starvation diet, but it was actually 800 calories a day. Now, that's important compared to a guy who goes on to the zero calorie diet, the kind of effects he suffered compared to me. So anyway, but he did lose pounds, and he did reverse his diabetes in 11 days, and he did play out there was a study of 11 other guys who all reversed their diabetes in eight weeks of low calorie diet. So this is neat stuff about diabetes, you know, being solved so easily. So, now I knew more about that. I'd seen a video by a Dr. Lodi, and I told you about it, where he found that there are certain components in cells, and he called them cyclical AMPs and cyclical GMPs. And in people with cancer, they got one AMP for every five GMPs. But in people who were healthy, they got five AMPs for every one GMP. And he found that by giving everybody on a fast, after five days, you completely reverse those things in your cell, which help you fight off your diseases like cancer. So that also impressed me. So I said, okay, I'm going to start just to see what can happen. Well, now of course I did the John Armstrong way of sustaining myself during long fasts, but I'm going to step on to other stuff, some articles that haven't been mentioned. Fasting kills cancer and boosts immunity in seven days. Well, that's one good reason I wanted to give it a try. So, and uh, the next one's called Starving the Beast. And basically it points out that animals fed near starvation diets see dramatic boosts of their lifespans. A lack of nutrients seems to spur the activity of cellular repair mechanisms. So, in a nutshell, Jesus wants everybody to eat about the same amount, and those who eat it too fast die sooner. <coughs> um, not eating at all for a few days, as opposed to months of eating much less, could make ordinary, non-cancerous cells more resistant to therapies and things like that, like chemotherapy. So, fasting can actually make cancerous cells more susceptible. Need, eh? So, when you fast, your healthy cells hunker down and the DNA starts to work more efficiently. But cancer cells can't do that. Just give me more, give me more, and when it ain't got it, it dies. And it gets autolyzed. And I explained what autolysis was last time. And that is when your body goes in starvation mode, your cells start to get eaten up. Whole cells. Disintegrated into different components, eaten up by the other cells. And I asked, what goes first, brain cell or fat cell? And everybody went fat cell. And what goes next, heart cell, lung cell, or tumor cell? And everybody went tumor cells. Yeah, smart. That must explain why fasting kills cancer. Now, you've got to do it for long enough, of course. And the next one, why fast part two, some good stuff says normal cells go into survival mode during starvation. Cancer cells cannot. There's no novel survival mode to switch on for them. So, cancer cells, big trouble in starvation mode. Finally, in one of my videos, I think the last one, um, I talk about this article here that says, cancer is always accompanied by inflammation. So it starts with a damage and then the cancer.
cancer takes hold. So, cancer starts with inflammation at all times, they found. Now, the reason I bring this up is because, remember the story I told you about my mother's leg? She had Raynaud's disease, you know, extremities get gangrene, fall off. And so she had one leg blow up two, three times in size, four times its area, chopped off. And the next one had started. Foot was black, and now this leg is now doubled in circumference, which is four times the area. Imagine that inflammation. And I said, we're going to try it. We put it on a pure fast with miracle water. And five days later, all the inflammation disappeared, and her leg went back to normal. And of course, the poison and the gangrene that shot up the killer, we were told. So, you know, too bad. But the, the point is, it worked for inflammation. But the point is, the inflammation has a cause, which meant that the urine therapy gets to the cause. Wow. So, that was the lead into the urine therapy about how it made the inflammation in my mother's leg disappear. And I'm saying, wow, I witnessed that. I saw that miracle from this big down to normal overnight. So, we find something special in here. Now, you remember in the video last month, I've already had the article about growing new teeth in China using urine stem cells. So, there are stem cells in the urine captured by the kidney for issuance to the outside world. Which is why if you pee on a cut, teeter stem cells in there. Maybe they could form all sorts of things. Well, do they? I found another article. Generation of human-induced pluripotent stem cells from urine samples. Now, pluripotent, if you go to Wiki, simply means that it can produce three different types of cell, interior stomach lining, gastrointestinal tract, and lungs, and in the meso, that was the uh, endotherm, and in the mesoderm, interior stomach lining, gastrointestinal tract, the lungs, and finally, urine stem cells can produce muscle, bone, blood, urogenital, or the ectoderm, epidermal tissues, and nervous system. Urine contains pluripotent stem cells that can create everything. So that explains why it does its miracles. Okay, pluripotent stem cells. Now, another article I came across after my first speech to you guys. Guess what? When a cell gets autolyzed or phatosized, or not all the DNA gets broken down into its amino acids and dumped into the blood. Whole strands of DNA get transferred and not degraded. Whole strands of DNA, about 0.2%, I think, up to there, in the blood, are circulating. And guess what? They go right through the kidney barrier into the urine. So, they can now grab DNA out of urine instead of having to go dig it out of blood. And there are advantages. I did, I did a commentary, and I'll just read it quickly. They say, these results suggest that the most of the injected DNA is reutilized in an organism or degrades into acid soluble products and is excreted in the urine. However, a small portion of this DNA is not completely degraded and is excreted from the bloodstream through the kidney barrier into the urine. No other way. It is this latter fraction that is the focus of our further investigation. And I said, well, it is also this latter fraction that could be doing the healing miracles. So, detection of human cell sequences in DNA from mouse urine, a very rough estimate based on the data presented, up, indicates that 0.5 to 2% of the free DNA that passes through the bloodstream crosses the kidney barrier and is excreted in the urine. The amount of DNA that's excreted in urine is much higher than one would expect on data from protein filtration studies in the kidney. And I said, yeah, lots of loose DNA with the plans on rebuilding everything. Finally, there are some evident advantages of urinary DNA-based technology compared with the analysis of plasma, blood DNA. Urine-based tests are absolutely non-invasive. Urine is non-infectious for HIV. 
or other pathogens. So, I said, HIV can't live in urine, but it can live in blood. Hmm, must be antiseptic, antibiotic T cells on attack. So, B, the concentrations of DNA in plasma and urine are similar, but much more urine can be easily uh, obtained for analysis. And I said, imagine concentrations of DNA are the same in your urine as in your blood. and can easily come. So finally, D, isolation of DNA from urine is technically much easier because the protein concentration is a thousand times full lower. So that means that instead of having to clear the DNA out of a lot of blood products, when you clear it out of urine, there's only the DNA, a few stem cells, vitamin, minerals, basic stuff, and then nothing else. A thousand-fold less junk to clean it out of. I said a much purer shock of DNA unclouded by all the other products in the blood. Finally, in our study, we had no problem with PCR inhibitors, a well-known problem for DNA isolated from blood. In some cases, parallel analysis of urine and plasma DNA will increase the test reliability. And I said, so do we call it stem cell or DNA water? It has high concentration of DNA and whole stem cells already built. Wow, what a positive feedback loop. Ain't God grand. Ain't God grand. All right, final bit, just pick this one up. What's in your pee? After a, oh, I got two pieces, and yeah, that wasn't that important. After, this is what they found. It took seven years and 20 researchers, but a team at the University of Alberta finally, using all the available state-of-the-art equipment, figured out the chemical composition of human urine. Blah, 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 blah. It says, medical textbooks list anywhere from 50 to 100 chemical compounds in standard urine. And tests only check for six or seven compounds. But this study found there are over 3,000 chemical compounds out of your blood system, created by your body for attacking bad stuff elsewhere. Each metabolite entry contains more than 110 data fields, all important chemicals. So, to know exactly what's going on in our urine, he says, it can help us understand how our diet affects our waste management system. You know, it is an incredibly complex biofluid. We have no idea there could be that many different compounds going down our toilets. Your toilets, maybe, not mine. <laughs> They said, waste management system. I said, people ask if urine is that beneficial. Why are the kidneys excreting it? For topical use. Liquid flesh to disinfect and rebuild cuts. When a meteorite hits Starship Enterprise, repair or submarine, repair materials have to be patched both inside and out. Well, how did they get the materials out? Jeffrey's tubes, for us Trekkies, we know what they are, with doors on each side so that you can bring them in, get it out, and go patch it. Now, why wouldn't God offer a way to get the repair materials outside, too? Ain't God grand, one grand engineer, to have made our body ships just as functional? I'm on the 53rd day of my year in fast. YouTube my reports, cure all fast after 28, 35, 40, 50 days with report 56 coming up Wednesday with vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, stem cells, DNA, and 3,000 other powerful chemical components packaged into one potent medicinal elixir that truly merits the name Miracle Water. Anyone who thinks such a powerful concoction is a waste product Better think again. So, here I am after 56 days. Six meals, maybe four snacks, nothing big other than that, little pieces of chocolate here and there, sucking on watermelon. And I tell you, this guy in the article about the diabetes, after two
two days he was hungry, and he's eating 800 calories a day, you know, nice shakes and uh, salads and stuff. And after four days, he's shivering, he's cold, and he's, you know, weak. Sorry, six days, he's wearing three sweaters, and he's shivering all the time. After eight days, he can hardly walk upstairs. Eight days! I'm 56! Seven times more! And I'm still taking the casino escalator two steps at a time. <laughs> you know, what's going on here? The only difference was, I was sustained by my kidney milk, my miracle water. I call it kidney milk because it's like milk. Milk is a nutritious product for babies captured from the blood by the mammaries. And urine is a nutritious product for adults captured by the blood by the kidneys. Pretty smart machine. 3,000 compounds, stem cells, and DNA. <laughs> so anyway, that's the only thing I've done differently than the poor guy who starved his way through an 11-day fast to beat his diabetes. Now, Dell over there might come up for a few minutes and tell you about 28 days. He started after last week. So, again now, little snacks, I think more than me, so he's had rumblings in his tummy because he's keeping the thing awake. But anyway, seems if you put it completely to sleep, when you put the urine back in, it won't wake up your immune system. It's exactly everything it wants, okay? And some people said, there's dirt in there. Well, then it goes out the dirt chute, but at least it's out of the blood and trying to get out the dirt chute. So, 56 days later, God, I'm so tempted for the pleasure of <laughs> just of eating and the habit of it all. But I'm not hungry yet, so I'm just going to stick it out. Hey, Armstrong's longest was 101. Geez, I wonder if I could do it too. No, 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 I had my meals. I'm going to cheat a few more times. I ain't no fanatic. But all I'm saying is, what if the ability... Now, I mentioned in here also these longevity guys trying to want to live to 150 years by turning their DNA cellularly more efficiently with these starvation, low-calorie diets. Well, what if the idea of low-calorie diet is like some guy in the savannah who managed to kill something once a week? And the other six days, he's eating little shrubs and stuff and drinking his miracle water. What if they knew? So what if eating when you're hungry, and not every day, but when you're hungry, and then if you're processing as much of your miracle water as you can, you just can't get that hungry. Right, Del? Yeah. You just can't get hungry, you know? Even if you're cheating once in a while by temptation, it's incredible that we might all be able to live on one meal a day, and that might be a solution to world hunger, as well as kill all the cancers we're all getting from the nuclear fallout from Fukushima, and it's getting worse. So, give it a try right away, because you don't want your cancers to get too big, because then it'll take a big fast, and you might not be able to outlive your cancer. But if you start now, before they get very big, and you know they're in there, just because the Canadian government turned off the fallout detectors, do you think it didn't get into you somehow? Wake up! So, here's an easy solution. Fat people! The zero calorie, zero hunger diet! Let's give it a try! Lose 30 pounds, 50 pounds without feeling hungry. And if you do, go eat once! I've had six feasts in that time, and they weren't even pickups. In the old days, I could have eaten a lot more. So anyway, yes, okay, Bill, I'm pretty, I'm finished, basically, that's it. Do you refrigerate your miracle water? What? Do you refrigerate it? No, 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 just fresh out of the town. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could, I could, I could, you know, I mean, it's just so tasteless. You know? Do you think that they can regrow teeth like that miracle water? That's what they just said. The people in China. They've already done it. It stems it. Pluripotent stem cells in your urine. How do you think it fixes cuts? How do you think it disinfects and fixes blisters? Anyway, the miracles listed in John Armstrong's book, uh, Urine Therapy or Water of Life, I believe. I've seen them. I told you about my disinfected root canal. Two days swishing with urine full time, and I disinfected a root canal, and that's a dental miracle. Can't be done, and I did it. Now they operate and spread the infection to all the smaller canals. Duh, and people die. And I found a way to disinfect it in two days for free, put it on the videos. Hey, I might have 200 hits. Anyway, yeah.
It's easy. My point is, if you chug it right away, you're not tempted to not chug it. And then you just don't get hungry. And fresh out of the tap, it's absolutely so nothing that you, it's, you just may as well. And you end up flushing really fast, too. He knows the same thing, you go like every hour and something good may be flushing out there. And he thinks it's his weight. He thinks the poundage is being converted to water, which is why he's putting out more than he's putting back. But anyway, can your, can your rear of the water retime your body? Retime? Retime it so that you get longevity to it. Yeah, yeah. well, no, no, the fasting does that. So you won't go for another no, I don't know if the miracle water helps. So you keep on good, you might be 150. I'm saying, I, well, not with Fukushima. Anyway, the point is, hey, now that I've given it a try and I've seen the Jesus, Eight weeks and I ain't been hungry once. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't here last month. Okay. What are we talking about? <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I would hope it's been almost been self-inclusive by now. I've been on a two-month fast. All right. And the only way I could sustain myself without dying and going through what this guy did is to drink all of my piss, all of my urine, which I say is not a dirt product, like down the back chute. It's more like milk, a blood product captured by a vital organ, the kidney instead of the mammaries. And we've been fooled and tricked into believing it's a waste product when these guys are going, 3,000 chemical components! You know what kind of a chemical engineering factory you need to make that many kinds of pills? And your body made them because it knew you needed them. And it gets back and recycled. And I've been able to sustain an eight-week fast with just six cheats without being hungry once and dropping 32 pounds. So the miracle water is that you got has sustained me where nothing, where the other guy's almost dead after 11 days. See my point? That's the purpose of that story. Yeah. You want to come tell your report on what happened to you? Well, let's yeah, I'll make it. No, wait, wait, come on, take a few minutes. 28 days, what's your experience in talking to the mic? You don't, you don't have my stentorian I'm running voice. Sit! Camera, sit. I'm running 28 days. Now speaking of the mic, this guy used to run rock bands. You ought to know how a mic works. Anyway, I'm 28 days. I knew nothing about any of this before I started. Closer. I can't Last thing hear you. I would do is chuck, you know, John's been doing it for years. Anyway, I watched him for the first month and I said he didn't fall over, he's not flat on his back. You know, he hasn't turned gray, so I gave it a shot. Now John, John's doing what's called the fast, fast, fast. That means no food except the odd little, you know, song because he went in after ailments known and unknown. He's going to clean himself up. The weight loss, which is now roughly 30 pounds, is um, secondary. It's a, it's a corroborated effect. Well, I, the opposite. I want to lose weight, and uh, ailments known and unknown will be my problem. Hang on a second. Uh, just, just, just to finish off a few more like, small comments, comments here and so on. Uh, what I found is you have to chug it. It's, it's in, it's out. No, I'm sorry, it's out. It's in. If I let it sit even for ten minutes or so, then it's already started to get the smell and stuff that turns you off, and I can't do that. So, and you don't notice it if you just put it straight down. It's, it's. You know, there's almost no... Uh, not quite as revolting. Huh? It's not quite as revolting. No, it's not quite as revolting. I mean, the first... Yeah, it's, it's, it's well, if you sure. have a couple of pairs, it ain't revolting at all. I didn't do that. It's a curing cycle. You're not going to say, well, this is nothing, boom. You're going to spend a couple of days. How much water do you drink? Well, I don't drink that much over and above. Because remember, if you drink more water, there's no smell. Yeah, well, true enough. True enough. I, I probably drink about a liter and a half of... Well, I drink a lot of coffee, so... Make it two Coffee liters. Is no good. I'm sorry. You need water. Hey, I apologize. Some people like your cheap drugs, Billy, so <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm going to continue drinking coffee. Yeah. But anyway, the long and the short of it is, I, I, I this is going to sound kind of gross, but, but I, I can pee out four full cups after an hour and a half. And where the hell did that all come from? And I figured that's from you know, fat, when fat burns, it turns to water. Supposedly, and I figured that's where it's going, so I am losing it. I have no idea how healthy I am. Well, yeah, but I, I'm doing now. I'm, he's doing he's doing a vast fast, which means no food, and I'm doing what I call a um, mini fast half fast kind, of, half fast, because I'm eating a bit, not much, but maybe like four. Five. An egg. 
Huh? An egg in a day. Well, my dinner. Yeah, <laughs> egg. Yeah, that's my dinner. Cheater, cheater. Cheater, cheater. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if neither of you start next month, don't try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you come back next month and we'll see how much weight you lost. All right. Yeah, well, again, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure he can attest if he felt hungry, he'd go eat. You know, me too. So I'm going to see how long I can last. I got nothing to lose. To, and if this longness helps spread the message, all the better. Too many poor people out there dying because they're fat and polluted with nuclear fallout. And boy, what a cut in budget! You know what it's like when you're not buying food for two months? No hamburgers, no fast food. You don't know even I mean? you know I mean? like cheese coffee, you know? But anyway, honestly, no food budget. That's kind of weird. Not only that, when I do go back to food, I'll be tempted to eat healthy stuff, you know? I can't wait to get food. So that's about it. There's my 56 day report. And maybe I'll come back at another propitious day. Yes? I would expect that the good stuff has been captured for reuse. And I don't know. I mean, uh, how can it hurt us? I just can't imagine, you know, maybe you need less drugs if you're recycling the good stuff out of that. I mean, that's the first thing I think, you know. So, uh, oh, I had a few marijuana muffins, I swear. That's it. Snacks and six meals. Let's see how I do with this. Yes. What? What bowel movements? Actually, if I swallow watermelon, you can't believe it. A watermelon will give you a big bowel movement. A lot of roughage there. I didn't know. So now I just suck it and spit out the bowel because I don't want to wake up my bowels, right? Let them sleep for a couple of months, you know? <laughs> anyway, I woke them up at least three times a month and I'll do that again. I'm no fanatic. And, uh, but who knows if this experiment might not lead to all sorts of neat things because I had some really, really high cholesterol problems before going in. And for another reason, I guess I tried it. And when I stopped, I got my test ready to go. I'm going to go see if it changed very much. You know? I love the guy that goes, wow. So we'll find out, okay, when I stop. But right now, it's 56 days looking for 101. <laughs> okay. John the Engineer signing off at the Bradford Inventors Club. <laughs> I was going to come in with, you know, uh, one of my older coats on. I even said to Dell, you know, how about pushing me in a wheelbarrow, you know? And then I'd sit there and I'd say, 56 days. And then when the video started, I'd jump up and put it in the 